In today's video, we're going to discuss simple setup changes with your driver to gain a little bit more yardage off the tee. Make sure you check out this video. And I'm going to hover the club before I pull the trigger. Now, that was the solid one that I really want. Again, felt like it up on the ball. Still had the draw shape, but started more to the right of the target. So, John Watts here from the True Golf Academy. You've joined me in the indoor studio in today's video. As I mentioned there in the intro, it's all going to be about setup changes, not swing changes, but to improve your driver, to gain a little bit more yardage off the tee. If this content is of use to you, make sure you hit the thumbs up, share it with as many golfers as you can. And if you're new to my channel, you haven't already, please do consider subscribing. If you hit the little bell icon, it just notifies you every time a new video goes live. So as I said, we're gonna be discussing this off the tee with the driver, but actually a lot of these changes, or some of these changes at least, would still be relevant when we go into an iron, and I'll, I'll indicate as we go through which ones would, which ones wouldn't. And we're talking about trying to gain some speed, gain some distance, which ultimately means I'm making a bigger turn back, a bigger turn through, creating a little bit more club head speed, and we're just gonna be discussing setup. So nothing swing related, pretty simple changes. The first thing, we're going to be doing or asking golfers to do is to flare their feet out, especially their lead foot that's closest to the target, but there actually is scope in trying to, to do their trail foot as well. So I get too many golfers starting with their feet pretty straight. If you can flare, especially that lead foot out by a good 35 degrees or more, it will help your body rotates. So it will allow you to get your hips more open, where you're going to feel like your lead hip moves a little bit more over your lead toe, uh, uh, your knee and the center of your shoe. I was going to say toe there, the center of your, your foot. So it's allowing your lead side to open up on the way through by turning that open. There are some golfers who start with that foot straight, who spin as they turn, and that's fine. The issue I've got is if the ground was hard and your foot got stuck, the amount of force that you're applying there on your knee and your hip is just easier if you flare that foot out to allow that rotation through. You certainly could flare that trail foot out as well to actually allow this hip to turn more. By allowing that hip to turn more, you're allowing your torso to turn more. If you're flexible enough that you don't need that flared out that much and you can still create a good 90 plus degree shoulder turn, that's fine. For those who've got a little less mobility, flexibility, flaring their trail foot out is also gonna allow this hip to turn, allow their shoulders to create a bigger turn. So as I'm allowing my hips to turn more, allowing my shoulders to turn more, you'd start to see that this knee is gonna lose some flex. There's obviously some gap between it. But we're just talking about setup changes here. So flaring the feet out, especially the lead foot, is really gonna be helpful. Another thing we can do at setup is encourage us to hit up on the golf ball to gain yardage. And we're gonna encourage ourselves to hit up on it by tilting a little bit away from the target. What most golfers do wrong is they push their hips towards the target to try and set their upper body back. I don't want you to change the hip placement. So I want your hips still to be between your feet and I just want you to feel like you reach your trail hand, your fingertips of your trail hand towards your trail knee. So your trail shoulder sits a good 20 degrees lower than your lead side without changing my hip alignment. So I'm not having to push my hips to create that tilt. That's gonna help me strike up on the ball. They did a robotic testing and I think it was about 85 miles an hour club head speed and they hit four down, zero and four degrees up and it made 40 yards of carry distance from the four degrees down to four degrees up. So eight degree difference in terms of angle of attack, 40 yards. So it's massive if we can start to create that upward angle of attack and that tilt on the shoulders is certainly going to help it. If you are someone, because this is a video for everybody, if you are someone who's lost a bit of flexibility, mobility, even dropping at setup, because this is another setup change, even dropping their trail foot back a little bit is again going to allow my hip to turn more, my torso to turn more, to create a little bit longer swing. So if you're someone with a shortened swing or reduced coil in your backswing, dropping your trail foot back to effectively close your stance can also help. The last setup change that I would encourage you to make with a driver if we're looking for a little bit more off the tee. So I've flared the foot out, potentially dropped that back, definitely created the tilt with my upper body. The last 
the last setup change we could make with a driver is just to start with a club hovered in the air rather than on the ground. So a lot of people struggle with tightness tension. So what I want you to do is just before you hit the golf ball, elevate it slightly and start the swing. And you should find it a little bit easier to take the club away from the ball in a nice smooth, wide movement away from the target rather than feeling like it's dragging along the ground. So I've always liked that thought of hovering the driver head. And you could think of it as a low, slow takeaway and creating some width. Now, width is a, a term I need to be careful with because I don't want width with a big lateral movement off the golf ball. Width is just keeping my lead arm stretched away from me. My trail arm has to allow some softening movement for that to happen. But we definitely don't want a narrowing arms and hands in towards the body. So allowing that club just to hover could help if you're too tight, too tense, struggling with that first movement or trying to feel that you want to create a little bit more width. Let's go ahead and hit one. Just using some of those setup changes. Flared the foot out, tilted up a body away from the target. We'll have a look at angle of attack. Could drop that foot back if you want to increase your turn and I'm just going to hover the club. <laughs> Felt like I overdrew it a little bit but Let's have a quick look at the numbers, a bit more curve than I would like to see. So very quickly there, not going to delve too much into it. I created an in to out swing path. That's going to help to try and hit that nice high draw shape that I'm really looking for. I hit up on the ball by 4.6 degrees. So definitely got an angle of a tuck upwards. If you're starting to hit more up than you were before, you may just have to look at T height. Just spray the club face or put some tape on the face. Start to look at strike location. If you're changing your angle of attack, you may have to change your tee height that you need. You want the ball to be center or a little bit above center if you're going to be either way. So 4.6 on the way up. I got a nice high launch, a low spin, all good for distance really. You know, and I got that club head speed up to 107 miles an hour. So I'm just going to hit one last with those couple of setup changes again. Now, I did mention I talked about what would be relevant with the, the iron. The only one that's really not is the bigger tilt with the upper body away from the target. Your, your trail shoulder should sit uh, lower than your lead shoulder, even with an iron, but not as much tilted. And the only reason your hands, uh, sorry, your shoulders are tilted is because your trail hand is going to be lower than your lead on the golf club. So I wouldn't do this part with the iron, but the foot flared out, the dropping the foot back to increase the turn are all relevant. I personally don't hover the club with an iron where I do with the driver just because the driver's on the, on the tee, but I've seen good golfers who have hovered their irons as well and had success doing it. So kind of whatever's comfortable. So I'm going to flare the feet out, especially my lead foot, dropping that foot back a little bit to help me increase my turn. Tilt with the upper body away from the target. You can see I haven't changed my lower body to achieve that. And I'm going to hover the club before I pull the trigger. Now, that was the solid one that I really want. Again, felt like it up on the ball. Still had the draw shape, but started more to the right of the target. So they've got the shape that I really wanted to see there as well. Very, very happy with that one. Definitely, I don't even need to look at it. Definitely created an upward angle of attack. As I'm talking to you, it will come up on the screen. So I'll have a quick peek at it. But that felt solid. So those simple setup changes are just going to help you get a little bit more speed out your driver. That was 3.7 into out, 4.6 on the way up. So definitely got that high launching, low spinning draw shape that we really want to see off the tee. I hope those tips help. If they do, hit the thumbs up, share with as many golfers as you can, and if you haven't already, please do subscribe.